Hey, what's up guys? It is Rob and welcome to day one of Horror Madness. In the month of October, I am going to be reviewing a horror movie every single day. And um, they're going to be random. I'm not going to, you know, pick a franchise like Friday 13th and say, okay, I'm going to review, you know, all 12 films or anything like that. It's going to be a lot of random films, but they're going to be some of the best. So, for day one, I am going to review, hands down, one of my favorite horror movies of all time. If you can't see it already, the 1974 classic, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Here I have the Pioneer Edition on DVD, as well as other editions on Blu-ray. I love this film. Without a doubt, one of the best. My favorite horror movie of all time is The Shining. But this movie is in my top 10 for sure when it comes to my favorite horror movies of all time out of every single horror movie out there. This would definitely be in my top 10. I love it. I've been watching this since I was, you know, really, really young. I'd watch this, you know, the night before I had to go to school. I had to get up for school like the next day and then you know I'd watch this like over and over again my parents would probably be like what's wrong with our son <laughs> the movie's great man it um, it's very realistic um, kind of um, I want to say it's not scary it's disturbing in a lot of ways and it doesn't rely on a lot of blood and gore it relies on the imagination because they cut away in a lot of scenes and so you just have to sit there and imagine what's going on with the sounds and the screams and just you know whatever's going on in that scene you basically have to just imagine what they're going through but um, yeah 1974 what a year wasn't even born yet but this movie was written produced or co-produced and directed by Toby Hooper who also had his hand in the music as well um, the movie was marketed as a true story just to attract a uh, like an, a wider audience I mean from the beginning scroll you get this narrator talking about you know the murders the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre murders and um, he makes it seem legit like it actually happened, like he's actually reporting on something. Um, but it, it gets you hyped, man. It gets you pumped up. And that's, that was their goal, is to basically get people's um, reactions, their, their positive reactions to it. The plot is basically fictional. I mean, there are elements of the plot. Is, there's, there are some details. And the character Leatherface himself was based on, um, you know, the crimes of the real-life killer, Ed Gein. Um, you know, because Leatherface's trait, you know, he basically kills his victims and then wear, he wears their face uh, over his face. Because he's too ugly. You know, he, has he even seen Jason? What he looks like? He basically puts their face over his face and um, makes himself... Uh, a mask out of it and of course he has the all-popular chainsaw but just like many killers have their own weapon Jason has his machete Freddy has his glove Michael Myers has the kitchen knife um, you know F Fisherman has the hook Leatherface has the chainsaw it's um, it didn't really have a big budget I mean it was I don't know, it was kind of average, I'd say. 80000 to about $140,000. And at the box office, it made $30.9 million. Um, so it was uh, pretty much a success, even though critics were mixed about this. Um, Toby Hooper cast a bunch of unknown actors from Texas, like Central Texas, and that's where the film was basically shot um he was working long hours like seven days a week um trying to finish this film in a hurry so he can reduce the uh 
the equipment rental costs you know a lot of that equipment costs money if you're going to rent it you know pretty much every day and stuff so he tried to finish it just to reduce the cost of it he had it all in his head anyway he had everything you know the guy knows horror and i mean he had the whole vision um but he struggled to find a distributor because of the violent content and the violent content you know that becomes a problem with the critics as well um but that's why he limited the gore in this because he was trying to get a pg rating and it turned out that the mpa wanted they they gave him an r rating but he he held back on the gore and the blood and you can tell in this movie because this is not a gory movie it is not a gory movie like i say you know leatherface will hit hit up hit the guy over the head and you know you'll see a little blood here and there but when he's cutting up the guy on the table you don't see that and when he when he kills Franklin, uh, you know you you don't really see you just see him do this and like you hear Franklin screaming. You, you, the only thing that's kind of disturbing is where they show like a little bit of blood and stuff is at the end when Sally's chained or she's tied up on the chair and they're trying to they're trying to hit her head with a hammer over this this bucket. Um, that that's the only part that's. I guess kind of disturbing there and, and then the hitchhiker cut or nubbins or whatever cuts his his uh his hand with the knife and there's blood but it's not it's really not a bloody gory movie and, and it works I think a lot of films nowadays that rely on the blood and gore <clears throat> saw don't make any more saw movies anyway a lot of movies that rely on that stuff can take notes from this movie, okay? Take notes, because this movie did it just fantastic. It was it was fantastic the way they did it. You have to use your imagination of what's going on. It's more disturbing. You got the disturbing aspect. You got the people reacting to the situation, you know, the, the actors. So they make it believable. And so, you know, it's it just, it excites you. It really does. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. Um, but yeah, the movie got a rated R rating, um, and on release day, this was actually banned in several countries because of the, because of the, uh, violent content, and, and some theaters actually stopped showing it because people were complaining about the violent content. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people said that about The Last House on the Left. You know, the, a lot of people didn't like the, you know, the whole rape thing and, and that was pretty violent as well. But I thought that went more over the top in this movie. <clears throat> um, I mean, I could see maybe back then how people would react that way. Because this is the first of its kind. The, the Pretty much the first movie to use, like, I want to say horror cliches. Like, like the toolbox murders. Like, like the... This is a horror movie that actually uses like tools or or that are used for something else to actually murder people with instead of just knives. This movie is the one that did it. Um, but yeah, there, there were a lot of complaints. Critics were mixed about this movie. Um, I can just imagine what it would have been like if Hooper wouldn't have you know, held back on the gore and, and actually, you know, filmed it straightforward to where there's blood and people getting cut in half and things like that. I just, I just wonder how that would have gone. Um, but basically the plot of this movie is very simple. You have Sally and her brother Franklin and three other friends who visit their grandpa's grave. They're basically traveling in a van. They, 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 uh, Franklin and Sally want to visit the grave. They meet some weird people on, on, you know, while they're doing that. And then they decide to go check out the old homestead where they grew up, the grandfather's house. And what's cool is, you know, they pick up this, hit, this hitchhiker on the way and they start talking about where he works and how they slaughter cows and, like, he makes head cheese and stuff like that. And Franklin's sitting there, you know, with, with this knife or whatever. And then uh, this hitchhiker, he's so weird. Um, he has this camera, he starts taking pictures. He's like, 
You pay me now. It's a good picture. He, <laughs> and he, he cuts himself and he's just the weirdest. He did such a fantastic job. Um, his his name is Nubbin Sawyer, but he's played by Edwin Neal. And he, um, known as the Hitchhiker, he was fantastic. He was like my favorite part of the movie, besides Leatherface and everyone else. Um, he was... His acting was... He, he acted like a crazy person, and he did it well. So after they get rid of the hitchhiker, they end up at the, the grandfather's old homestead, the, the house where they grew up. And this is what I find cool about the story, is that when they arrive at this house, of course, it's abandoned. And, you know, the other two friends want to go um, explore the place a little bit and go swimming. And Franklin's like, yeah, there's an old creek down there by, by those two old sheds. And he's like, if I had too much fun, I don't think I would be able to take it. <laughs> so they go where the creek was supposed to be and it's dried up, but then they hear this noise and it sounds like a loud generator. And they find this other house that's near the, this vacant house. And, and, you know, that's when the trouble starts. They go into this house. Leatherface appears, hits the dude over the over the head with a hammer, drags him through in that doorway and slams that door shut, that like aluminum door or whatever. And I'll never forget that scene. That was like the the when he first appears. That's like oh god, it's something you will never forget. And then you know the girl goes into the house. She gets captured by Leatherface. She gets put on a hook while. Um, Leatherface is, is basically uh, sawing her boyfriend in half with the chainsaw. And, like, again, you don't see it. But you can just hear her screaming on the hook and, like, all this is going on. The whole house is kind of creepy, too, from the outside. And then when they get when they go inside, they, there's, like, bones hanging. There's, like, feathers. There's chickens everywhere. There's just there's weird things in this house. But I just find the location kind of cool. Like, they go to this old homestead house, and down the way is Leatherface's house. Like, they follow this trail, and it's, like, down there, and, like, you can hear the noise from the generator. That's how you know that's Leatherface. I, I always found that scary. I don't know what... It, it just... So, the others are basically there at the, at the homestead, Sally and Franklin and them, and they're waiting for the others to come back. Um, you know, pretty soon, you know, people start dying off and it's basically just Sally and Franklin. Um, Sally was played by Marilyn Burns, who also appears in the Texas Chainsaw 3D, which I hated. I, I hated that movie. The timeline was all, all screwed up. Um, and I didn't get it. Marilyn Burns played in Texas Chainsaw 3D when that's supposed to be a direct sequel to the 1974 classic movie. And Marilyn Burns plays Sally, and she also plays the grandmother, which makes no sense. She plays... The same actress plays two characters within the same universe, the same series. The, the, the original and the sequel. It makes no sense. But... Sally is a great, like, final girl, so to say. Like, she she was great in everything. Like, she, the way she screamed, she was terrified. Just, uh, I just loved her performance, Marilyn Burns. She was great. Franklin by Paul Pertain. Uh, he's uh, paraplegic. He basically can't, you know, he's in a wheelchair. Um, he was funny a lot of times. He did, he did provide some comedy when it was needed. Uh, I kind of felt sorry for him because in the situation that happens with Leatherface, it's like he had no chance. He really had no way of escaping or getting out. You got Jerry, played by Alan da uh, Danzinger. You got Kirk, William Vale, Pam, who uh, played by Terry McMinn. Um, Nub and Sawyer, who plays the Hitchhiker. And the Sawyer family is, is where they go to that house with the generator. And the Sawyers are, you know, Leatherface. You got... Uh, Nub and Sawyer, who is the brother, uh, who's also the hitchhiker. And then you got the cook, 
who is also a, a creepy kind of character because he turns into like Pamela Voorhees. Like honestly, like when Sally goes to back to the gas station where he is, the cook, all of a sudden you think this guy's gonna help her and then he just turns on her and he's like, <laughs> and like starts hitting her and like, it just reminded me of Pamela Voorhees smacking Alice. It just, I don't know, like that whole part was great. Um, he just turns into a psychopath. Um, but Drayton, he plays Drayton Sawyer, um, Jim Sido. Uh, then you have Grandpa Sawyer, played by John Dugan, who doesn't really do nothing. He doesn't say anything. He just sits there and he's got all this makeup on to make him look, you know, like he's a corpse almost. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of sick because they have him suck the blood just so he can have strength because he's just sitting there all frail and just like I think one time he like smiles he's like like this and like like oh man it's 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 crazy that's like a crazy that's a crazy like just storyline um <clears throat> but I got to talk about something the third act of this movie I am going to spoil this but the third act of this film is one of the greatest third acts I've ever seen. It is one of the greatest endings to a horror movie I've ever seen. With Sally the only one left and she's tied to the chair while they're eating dinner, they decide to basically put her head over a bucket and start hammering her head like they did to cows back then. And they always said that Grandpa was the best, so they tried to have Grandpa do it. And a couple times he hits her, and you can tell it bashes her head in. And she's screaming. She's terrified. She's struggling. She finally makes it out. She makes it outside, and she's all hurt and stuff. And you feel this intensity. You feel for her. You're like, oh, my God, this is just crazy. You know, the hitchhiker, the brother, he goes after her with his switchblade. And then Leatherface goes after her, too, with the chainsaw, which is that shot right there. And the cook is sitting there like, get her, get her, Grandma, get her. Look what your brother did to the door. <laughs> but this last scene is so intense because she runs out into the road and there's this trucker coming, thank God this trucker guy and 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 Nubbin Sawyer is sitting there slicing up Sally and you know Nubbin stands in the middle of the road he gets run over he gets run over by the semi this the guy stops and he basically kind of protects Sally a little bit while Leatherface is trying to chainsaw the you know the the semi truck door and stuff like that guy turns around truck driver turns around he throws a wrench right at Leatherface hits him right in the head and the, and the chainsaw goes down on his leg and starts cutting his leg up. So Leatherface is injured, but that doesn't stop him. He's sitting there limping. This other truck comes from the other direction, the pickup truck, and Sally jumps in the back. And here comes Leatherface, and he's trying to get the truck going, and he can't get going. And, and that, was a good, that was a good moment for intensity. Let me tell you, that was great. Um... Leatherface is on the side of the truck. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's gonna kill Sally. All of a sudden, the guy takes off, and Leatherface is sitting there, like pissed off. He's like swinging the chainsaw like this, and he's turning around, and he's like, like, ugh, like this. And and she's sitting there. They're driving away. And she's like, ha, 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 ha. like you could tell that she's terrified, but at the same time, she's happy because she got away and she's basically laughing at the situation but she there's so many emotions going through her mind at that moment you just you really feel for her and then it ends with just Leatherface swinging his chainsaw like he's just pissed he's just like oh damn it you know and it, and it ends it's it's such a satisfying ending I was always wondering though what happened to the trucker because if you pay attention when that guy comes by in the pickup the trucker actually runs the opposite direction and you don't see him he like runs and he leaves his semi there while sally gets in the pickup truck and goes this way the the, the, the trucker goes this way he starts running and i'm like the, do you think leatherface actually went after him like where, where would that trucker even go anyway without a vehicle they're out in the middle of nowhere so i always find that funny like if you watch carefully the trucker <laughs> 
just runs. <laughs> Anyway, guys, this is a fantastic movie. I highly recommend it if you have not seen it. Um, but I wanted to talk about a lot of things, a lot of the scenes. So um, this movie for me is an all-out masterpiece. And for me, I give it a 10 out of 10 for sure. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for day two.